Good morning, beautiful people. This is just after the Sahasrama. Sorry for the interruption. As an ad. Never mind. Now I'll be doing a series like I promised. The career, the 10 jobs, career, talents, abilities, and we'll explore this whole area we call career. So by 2023, right? There was nothing like career before in the world industrially changed all that stuff and now artificial intelligence is changing a whole lot of stuff as we can see so where i come from in this briefly career for me is just a thing you do in the world or is it something more than that to you this we got to see and examine for ourselves yeah what does career really mean to me where i come from is to explore more from the aspect of where the talents and abilities lie where are your talents where are your abilities what is it that drives you innately that's what's important to know from where i come from not where you will eventually land up because the jobs or the career or jobs or whatever you will do is not so much about the position or the ceo or the success or the money these are all very linear narrow human terms what you are here to do as a soul shows up in the chart and that's what we shall explore the birth chart the d1 and the d10 the 10th divisional chart and now i shall go through some slides where we shall explore what exactly is the d10 and we'll simplify that as we go along okay so thank you for joining me here thank you for your likes your subscribes and let's get started and we shall do case studies also later on okay all right let's get started there you go what is a career or detailed chart now if you remember the navamsha and my navamsha playlist where we talked about the principles of navamsha we have the old zodiac pie over there and i have taken gemini as the examples as you can see right so gemini was divided into nine parts Navamsha in the Navamsha. In D10, it is divided into 10 parts. Now, I couldn't find out any good picture for you, beautiful people, on the internet about this 10 divisions, like a circular pie. Others I don't use because they're too confusing. So, number one, the D10 divides each zodiac into 10 parts as opposed to D9 into 9 parts. The zodiac, don't confuse it with Nakshatra, just the zodiac sign. Gemini is divided into 10 parts, Taurus is divided into 10 parts, and so on. Okay, so each Amsha or each part is of 3 degrees because it's a 30 degree belt of each zodiac. 3 degrees into 10. The unit division ends in Capricorn. In Amsha, it ended in Sagittarius. Of course, there's an overlap because of all of this uh, thing. In Gemini, you don't see that. If you look in the same pie chart in Aries, it ends with Sagittarius, right? The last Amsha is Sagittarius. Same way in for Aries, the same Aries in Dashamsha or 10th divisional chart, it will end in Capricorn, the 10th sign, the house of Karma. Why D10 for career? Since it pertains to the 10th house, the house of career, what you do in the external world, essentially. The work you do in the external world. That's why the D10 chart is consulted for all things regarding career, job, business, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Now, let's see. Next slide. Try to kind of minimize myself in a tiny little box over there. Okay. Just like we saw in the natal or Namamsha chart, D1 chart, what it represents, it represents you, what your personality is, who you are as a human being. Even though you might go on zooming into all the charts and all the respective things, you are still you. Namamsha is how you behave with spouse and what happens to you later in life. D10 is what you do in your career. So the house and the significations of the 12 house change in d10 so what do d10 houses mean essentially let's see one by one house number one house number one which gives you what career options is suited to you as per your work personality your work kind of personality who you show up in the world as you're not the same person with your 
parents for example as you are with your boss and colleagues no so and this we will take it with respect to nakshatra this is where we'll go 27 times right once again around the clock around the pie to see what nakshatra dictates what kind of professions you will be suited at and we shall see this with first with principles next video with uh, further videos with case studies and so on and so forth the second house is artha house right in the chart which shows what your values at work are how you talk to your colleagues and also the amount of wealth earned earned wealth because this is a house of work this is what you work as also the third house is the kama house where it shows in detail chart all this is only in detail chart yeah the colleagues and the peers your colleagues at work what kind of colleagues you will have who are your peers at workplace competitive spirit third house is ruled by mars right generally it's a karaka of the house so it starts for competition are you a competitive person right do you are you kind of a go getter and your skills because third house is also the house of skills but now the skills translate to work only career <clears throat> the fourth house because it's an emotional house it translates in detail to career satisfaction or if you want to have a home based business like many do now it also works out to attachment to work what kind of emotional satisfaction do you derive or not with respect to your work <clears throat> sorry coffee break the fifth house is creativity at your workplace because fifth house is the house of creativity fifth house also stands for children in the d1 chart so in the d10 chart it becomes subordinates <coughs> as opposed to your boss it also represents change of jobs if you want to change the job and the type of work you are going to do now this fifth house also ties in with what what is your creative intelligence like how is your innate creative intelligence applied to your place of work think of it that way the sixth house is the house of enemies in the d1 so here it becomes competition like the third house the carrier of the third house you might say enemies in opposition and obstacles at your workplace let's face it we are all competing in the workplace right the new energy that will shift and change but yes there is a thing Seventh house in the D one represented spouse. In this one represents business partnership. This is where the house characteristics sort of change and blend. Business partnership or spouse with respect to career. How well is your spouse supporting your career? See, eighth house, moksha house, ups and downs. It represents the ups and downs in your career. Everything translates to in your career, in your workplace. ups and downs joint assets if you have joint assets if you have a business in the 7th house then 8th house will denote those joint assets number 9 the 9th house mentors at work because it stands for the place of guru 9th house right guru philosophy higher learning maybe higher education good luck are you lucky at work do you get all the good stuff right projects you know the creamy projects to work on that kind of a thing it also stands for working abroad if you're going to work long distance you go to foreign lands and come back mind you there's difference between typically the 9th house and the 12th house 9th house might then dedicate you're going to work and come back to the homeland going to work come back 12th house in the same sense foreign lands yes but it might be permanent settlement abroad also depending on the placements now we come to the 10th house in the d10 chart which is authority which is boss what kind of a boss will you have at workplace again this you have got to do both with d1 and d10 okay i'm just giving you the d10 houses what they mean authority boss position appreciation whether you will achieve fame success whether you will become a leader in your workplace all that is dictated by the 10th house and how it works the nakshatra the planets and so on we'll see this The eleventh house is fulfillment because eleventh house is the realization of all your long-term dreams, long-term desires of life, financial success, the community, the social network because it's also a house of social media. Right? 
The twelfth house is moksha you are getting out of it, so it stands for retirement. Finally, when you are done with all this circus and drama, you are retiring. You are getting out of the mainstream and you are coming back to your. So it signifies retirement, settlement abroad, like I said, as opposed to only work abroad. Working behind the scenes because twelfth house is all for everything hidden. It can also mean hidden enemies at work, the backstabbers, so to speak, the scenes of. Working behind the scenes, loss of job in transits. Loss of job does not mean twelfth house has got some malefic planets, and you're always loss of job. Now that's why I put it in bracket. In transit, in transit, if something is going through that period, you might change jobs. Means you must lose one and get another one, right? That's all it means. Loss of one thing is gain of something else. Okay, let's get to the next one. I wanted to put some D10 career basics. These are the basic things you need to know. The D1 and D10 charts both to be seen for understanding talent, ability, and therefore the career satisfaction and a sense of personal fulfillment. Number two, typical approach. The typical approach you did for D9 also somewhat carries to D10. What we did in the Navamsha, the ascendant, the ascendant angle. The cusp of the ascendant, the nakshatra sign in the cusp of the ascendant, nakshatra of the planets, especially the tenth house and lords of the tenth house, first house and lords of the first house, their placements in both D1 and D10 to be examined. We are talking of one and ten now when we talk of career, jobs, business, etc. For understanding the drive, talents, approach, and professional possibility, these are all possibilities and potentials only. If you don't move your ass, nothing is going to happen. Number three, circa 2023 and forward, all kinds of professional fields in mainstream are undergoing rapid transformation. The old human ideas of work and career themselves are shifting their ground realities. Therefore, it is vital for all young people out there, all you wonderful fans, <coughs> to understand your own energy. Your own spirit and how and what is best suited for you, your personality, your fire, your passion, passion, and therefore your fulfillment. Everybody is passionate about one thing or the other. It is never the same. These talents we are trying to uncover here through this analysis. Number four concepts like success, fame, leadership are very illusory. In my own experience as being a leader. Are meaningless and redundant when it comes to who and what you are. That's what's important. As an embodied soul in human form, and have come to enjoy and play joyfully in this earth. You're in this earth for a little while. How big is your career anyway? These HR people, human resource people, are idiots. They are just trying to promote all hang carrots of all kind. You do this, and we'll promote you to the next level. That doesn't mean anything for you for your soul. You're there only. You're going to. Do work for 20, 30 years, and then you're finished. It's a very short time, trust me. So you, I do not encourage young people to ever go in that direction. I do not encourage you to chase success or chase fame or chase leadership or chase even big money. It's a waste of your life. Do not seek success. But seek clarity. Seek your own personal empowerment. Find out your passion, your bliss, your inner fire, and go in that direction. That will be more fulfilling, fulfilling to you when you look back upon your career, your life. Think, wow, I did all that shit. Imagine that, right? That's the feeling you got to finish with. Now let's see a concept that is called deities. There's a concept called deities, and I'll go back to the presentation, and we'll see that. Okay, so there's a concept called the deities, as you can see on the screen. Okay, I'll go to the screen and presentation here. The deities are ten of them, and I'll go through the qualities of the deities because this is very important to understand the personality. We divided the zodiac into ten parts. Each of this part has got a deity or a ruling kind of. Archetype, you might call it, right? This is an archetype of energies, and it's signified in terms of Vedic archetypal qualities, you might say. Okay, so here Indra is the king of the devas. Wow, the thing is really twisted. Hang on, yeah, okay. 
Indra is the king of the devas. Zero to three degrees. Okay, first let me go through the degrees. Zero to three degrees is Indra. <coughs> Agni is 3 to 6 degrees, Yama is 6 to 9 degrees, Asura is 9 to 12. It's just 3, 3 degrees each all the way going up till Ananta, that 10th part, which finishes the zodiac. Right? We are divided into 3 degrees each, each Amsha. And each Amsha stands for a particular deity. Right? Simple. That's in its simplicity. Okay, let me just get back to you on this because the zoom on my screen made something else over here. Hang on a minute. That, that should be much better, yeah? Sorry about that. So, Indra is the king of the Devas. Okay, the lord of the Devas. Devas are nothing but all the elemental forces, the elemental powers. And Indra is the lord of all of them. <clears throat> so, 0 to 3 degrees, Amsha shows the Indra kind of qualities, the king of the Devas. In D10 chart, the presence of Indra may indicate leadership qualities. The angle and the nakshatra at which these planets lie show you the hint there of your propensity or your quality to bring to the table in the workplace. We are talking about the workplace here. Leadership qualities, power, authority and success in one's career or profession. Right? That's Indra. Second one is Agni. Agni is the element of fire and represents transformation and purification in general. When Agni is prominent in D10, that means when planets or points are lying, even ascendant or the 10th lord is lying in 3 to 6 degrees, it signifies a person with strong work ethic, determination and ability to overcome challenges in their professional life. That's the 3 to 6 degrees. The 3, 6 to 9 degrees in any chart in the D10 and in D1 also to an extent, but this is predominantly used in D10. So I will stick to D10, the angle of talents. Yama is the god of death or the god of righteousness, Dharma. In D10, Yama's presence may indicate a strong sense of responsibility, discipline and adherence to moral and ethical principles in one's career. Okay, you see how this plays out in case studies is better. Number 4, Asura. 9 to 12 degrees is Asura. Asuras are considered powerful and more dominant in Rakshasagana Nakshatra, see if this plays out. Rakshasagana is the nakshatra. As you got to see my nakshatra playlist. This is where we get to deep dive of Vedic astrology. In the D10 chart, the presence of Asura may indicate a competitive nature, ambition, and drive to achieve success. That's 9 to 12 degrees. The fifth one is Varuna. 12 to 15 degrees if the planets or points are in angle in the D10 chart. It signifies there is more Varuna element. Varuna is a god of cosmic waters, ethers, also waters as in physical water. It signifies deep emotion, flow of energy in the emotional body. In D10 chart, Varuna's presence may indicate a person with excellent communication skills, adaptability, ability to connect with others in their professional endeavors. So these people can become good emotional communicators. Yeah, important, isn't it? The sixth one, Vayu, 15 to 18 degrees is Vayu. Vayu is God of Wind. Represents movement and agility. When Vayu is prominent in the D10 chart, it suggests a person who is dynamic, flexible and capable of swiftly adapting to changing circumstances in their career. Moves like the wind, right? Sorry. Okay. Number seven is Kubera, wealth, money. Show me the money. Now everybody wants money. The angle is between 18 to 21 degrees. So when planets of points in your D10 chart are between 18 to 21 degrees, it shows the god of wealth and prosperity is more prominent for you. It says a drive to accomplish that as well. Presence of Kubera may indicate financial success, abundance and potential for material gains in one's profession. Number 8. Ishana. 21 to 24 degrees. Ishana means the direction of northeast. It also stands for Lord Shiva. Represents spiritual growth and enlightenment. See the transition and when we go from 1 to 10, how it transcends in the profession itself. 
In detail chat, Ishana's presence may suggest a person with deep spiritual connection and the ability to find purpose and meaning in their professional life. Number nine, Brahma, 24 to 27 degrees. So, if any planets or points in your detail chart fall between 24 and 27, there is a more Brahma element or archetype in you, in your chart, in your profession. Is the creator. Brahma is a creator, so it represents high creativity, intellectual capability, innovative thinking. These people can become great innovators within the workplace. Doesn't matter where they are doing research and development, or within an organization like a corporate culture, banking institutions of all kinds, companies of all kinds, maybe even engineering companies. Innovative thinking, the potential for significant achievements in your career. Lastly, Ananta. Ananta is the cosmic serpent. Sheshnag, Arantana represents infinity and eternity. In the D10 chart, Ananta's presence may indicate a person with long lasting success, stability, and ability to make enduring contributions in their professional field. Personally speaking, I have a lot of Ananta stuff in my D10 chart. So, looking back on my life, I was like, wow, that's why I did all of this stuff. Very unique projects, very unique. CV, I have very unique resume. Like, I have not seen another instrument engineer who has done so many things, very first time kind of things. So, the unique contributions in the world can also be called Ananta. We'll examine this in case studies so it will be more clearer to you. Last, we'll finish up this last one. <clears throat> so, we'll finish up with this basic principle and I'll cover this more as we go along. It's too much to digest in one one shot one video right so that's the d1 chart on your left and it transforms to d10 in your career meaning what you're the same person d1 will always remain d1 d10 is what you do at work there's just one part of your life you don't have to give over indulgence into one part of your life you've got so many other parts of your life don't neglect your home front because of career Right? So both are present, both need to be considered. We will consider both the D1 and D10 chart as we go along. Okay? And we'll examine, I would think directly in terms of case study rather than going through this is what I'm thinking, thinking aloud here. Rather than going into just principles and dry stuff. So we'll just directly maybe go into case studies. Let me work on it for you. So number one. The transformation of D1 Lords of Talent. Lords of Talent is what Mercury, Venus, Mars. D1 Lords of Knowledge, Jupiter. D1 Lord of Work, Saturn. Saturn is just a workaholic. As well as Rahu and Ketu with all nakshatras and deities to D10. Meaning what? We will see the transition, how it works from D1 to D10. Suppose there is Venus here, the first house in D10, D1. Where does Venus go and land in the D10? You see, this one. Where does Venus go from here to here? There's always that. We'll do that in case studies. Number two, the ascendant and the lord of ascendant with the nakshatra and the tenth house sign and lord and nakshatra of D1 to D10 also we should consider because we are specifically focusing on work and here. Yeah. So we will do that. This is the career playlist. Welcome to the career playlist. The earlier ones which I made was when I myself was pretty raw in the whole thing. This is further development over the last two years. So now let's do it. And now I'm kind of being prompted to go in for, if you need career consultation, my email is linked in the description box. You can get in touch with me over my email. If you need a reading or so, but I do only personal. So Zoom, be ready to Zoom. I don't do just blind charts, doesn't help anyone. If I just give you a chart analysis, a word document, you'll take it and throw it in the trash can. I'm interested in helping you. So I have to know who you are, what your personal circumstances is. Be ready to zoom and chat with me first. Chat comes later. Chat comes first. Okay. It can be safe. 